it was a very positive experience for me, and, uh, and I was, uh, it's, uh, you know, regardless of the, the bigger picture for me is the, the conceit of, uh, of freedom, you know, of absolute freedom, and, and the ability to, to be, to, 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 you know, fight for that if you have to. And uh, who fired first, who fired second, uh, the, 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 the essence is that in any conflict, obviously, there is, it's the innocent people who suffer from it, you know. And, and that's it quite evident in the film, and that's the thing we have to analyze as a society, you know, world society, that we have to find a way of getting along, you know. We have to have respect so we don't have regrets. So we were told we could also ask you about, um, you know, your film career, and I'm wondering, since you traveled the world, can you tell us about, out of all the projects you've done as an actor, um, have you noticed a difference in terms of any particular films that people respond to depending on the country? And I guess sort of um, related to that question, is there one film in particular that you hear, uh, you know, from people internationally that just people constantly ask you about? Well, uh, in free association, I think the, the, the one thing people always want to know f is when is Godfather for? <laughs> that pretty much is a daily thing in my life, and which is a curious thing because this hasn't been a Godfather for. So I'm saying there's really a demand for the movie out there for some reason. There definitely is a demand for it, like a soap opera, you know. Uh, and but it's never happened. I know Francis is not interested, and in, or at least wasn't interested last week or whatever. But. Uh, Paramount does own the rights to it, so they could, if they wanted to do it, they could certainly say, "I want, we're doing it." But that's the main. That's the I would say the number one question that is that uh, that you know that, and then there are different diff, different uh, countries. Uh, I, I'm I, I'm very proud to to say that a movie I did called The Lost City. I get a lot of feedback around the world about the movie, and and because it's a movie that I, is again an independent movie that had to operate on its own radar and kind of make its own way, the fact that it had has had resonance over the years with people, it makes me very proud. Uh, but yeah, different countries, like I know, and different age groups and different genres. Because I'm sure Mambo Kings and, you know. Well, I wasn't in Mambo Kings. I'm sorry, not Mambo Kings, um, the other movie that you did, uh, where you played the... Didn't you play like a... Um, like a musician? In uh, yeah, I did for HBO called uh, Toro Sandoval, that's, trumpet player. That's what it was. Yeah, that yeah. was a, an HBO movie. Yeah, I mean, they, and it depends on the genres. You know, there's uh, women really talk to me a lot about when a man loves a woman. They say, I've seen it a hundred times. I'm going, that's like torture, you know. <laughs> and, uh, but I appreciate it, you know. But, uh, and then other people will have other things. Some people will say, about it, go way back and they could reach to the untouchables. There's a lot of people that I get feedback on Modigliani and said, I saw that's my favorite movie. So it depends on the individual, you know. It really depends on it, you know. But I, I would say if the one question that I get asked almost daily in my life, you know, is when is, hey, Andy, <laughs> where's Godfather 4? <laughs> What about doing it? Can I ask what? some questions? Well, I've, yeah. I've okay. been trying to ask this thing about the, the accent. What? How do you prepare when you've, you've got... Well, I had one day to work with... Uh, uh, when I got the job, I knew, you know, I had to have some sort of an accent in it because the director wanted it. So I, I worked with Jessica Drake, who's a woman, a uh, vocal coach, you know, dialect coach that I've worked with before. And I had one afternoon to go in there and break break down the, uh, went through the script and break broke down all, all the words. And uh, she gave me some samples, uh, uh, you know, of the tonality of tape that I could listen to. And, and then I had three days to, you know, by Monday, that was Thursday, and Monday I had to, what they said, let it fly, as they say. Because you don't want to be thinking about the accent. You want to get at least comfortable enough where you're just in it, you know. So, Andy, I wanted to ask you, um, because you were talking about freedom, and we have seen a resurgence of presidents in Latin America or South America that have leftist tendencies. One is Chavez, that he's been there for a while, and now he's going to Cuba back and forth. Uh, what's your opinion about Chavez, and wh how um, how do you want to see like Cuba in the future? Do you want to go back? Mm -hmm. uh, I know it's kind of like a well, I, I broad mean, question, but well, it's a long question. I, I I still dream, and I 
uh, for Cuba to be free, to, have to, to, you know, to deliver the promises of what the revolution were about, which is democracy and a restoration of the Constitution and, and uh, respect for human rights and the absolute freedom and pluralism. That's what the revolution was about. I mean, we had that prior to, even when Batista was there, that existed. Yes, they have a corrupt government, and he was, people were embarrassed by him and want to get rid of him and all that stuff. But, the, you know, there was individual freedoms there, you know. And uh, so that, I'm still waiting for that promise. But then we see all these presidents, you know, like in Ecuador or Peru, not Peru, lately. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think? It's kind of like well, counteractive you know, to, you know, everything. Well, you know, because if there's an election and people decide to elect a president, then that's, there's an election. Mm -hmm. Cuba, there's no elections, you know. Uh, whether you would vote for that president or not, it's your individual choice. Whether you believe in their, in their political philosophy or... What, what they stand for, but what's important is to have elections, mm -hmm. and then after the end of the four years, you got to have another election. Whenever a situation turns into a dictatorship, then mm -hmm. it is what it is, you know, the, and, and that's what I feel there is in, in Venezuela, and, uh, you know, whether it's a dictatorship of the right or of the left, it's a dictatorship, you know? and uh, I don't support that, and, and I wouldn't, I would not, why would anyone support that, so. Just really quickly, can you tell us about your upcoming projects? I have a movie I did uh, in Mexico, which is still in post, called Cristiada, about the Cristero Wars, and I play a general of the Cristero Army, a uh, historical character named Enrique Gorostieta. Sounds like more than a two-day shoot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 What period that, is that was like uh, three months. <laughs> and uh, but I, you know, it was uh, three months on a horse. You know, that was good. Uh, period 19, 1926 is. Uh, oh. And uh, Ruben Blaze is in it, and Eva Longoria, and Oscar Isaacs, and Catalina Sandina Moreno. Uh, so we're, they're still in post in that movie. It was an independent film, Fine Inside of Mexico. Uh, I just finished a movie last week uh, called Open Road with Camilla Bell, where I play a, a homeless father. Uh, you think I'd know all the things I've done. I, it's my memory, you know. <laughs> I have a tendency once I do it to kind of move on, you know, until I. And then I, so I come back and sit in front of a table. 